<laughs> Hi everyone, welcome to Adobe Live Day 3. This is our last segment today. I'm with photographer Tyson Wheatley Hello. and Emily Nathan from Tiny Atlas Quarterly. Hello. Thanks for coming everyone. I invited you all very specifically, so <laughs> glad everyone came. Um, so we have one more session today if we want to pull up the schedule. Uh, earlier today we had Pay with Michelle. And do we have it? Do we have it? Perfect. This week on Adobe Live. And at one, we have Tiny Atlas Quarterly again with photographer Dan Tom, hosted by Ben. So thanks for tuning in, everyone. And there's no World Cup game. Yeah. No it's World Cup game. Not until Sunday, huh? Right? Yeah, is it Final? Sunday or Saturday? I don't know. I don't know either. Well, I'm going to be watching for We're sure. We're all going to be watching. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so everyone should be watching this instead. Uh, That's right. We're going to have a lot, probably... At all. least triple. <laughs> right? No? Okay. I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Everyone's so there's, no, there's a chat and win today for oh, a lovely notebook. And then we also have a portfolio review. So oh. if you want to go to behance.com or .net slash live, we have a, a portfolio review tab. So... Uh, put your portfolio in there and then get a chance to have some awesome critiquing later. But today we're chatting about mobile. We are. Yeah. Yeah. How, how exciting. Do you, how do you feel about that? Good? Good. I feel great about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel great about this it. I have so Tyson's many questions. Power zone. Right? Yeah. I mean, um, my, I, my background I is, get back on it is really in mobile. I mean, I, that's how I got my start. That's my comfort level. Um, I know we've talked a little bit about this in the last couple of days. I think I probably mentioned it, but I, I, I actually, <clears throat> I shoot on a lot of devices, but uh, whenever possible, I, I get those images on my phone because my comfort level with editing is on my phone and I use a variety of tools. Mm. And I also, a lot of the work I do, it seems to be specifically for mobile. So a lot of the clients that I work for, they want me to create images that they are going to use typically in like a social media way, specifically Instagram and other places. But um, I'm generally creating images that are going to be consumed on a mobile device. So um, yeah, and for the first, I'd say uh, probably for the first, I mean, I've been on Instagram, I think, seven years now? Holy moly. Is that it? <laughs> um, I guess for the first three of those years, I was iPhone only. Wow. And everything that I would shoot and everything. And Anyway. So you've There's got some good tips. Up. Yeah, now I feel like maybe now I've talked it up too high. <laughs> so maybe I'll come back down to earth. One but, thing. Uh, I'm excited about mobile photography. Yeah, totally. Yeah. One question I have for the audience is, um, there's a lot to talk about about mobile. So there's mobile shooting on mobile, mm -hmm. and there's mobile editing, which are the main camps of things. And we'll probably cover both. But if you're interested in like some more information about shooting on mobile versus editing on mobile, let us know, and we'll sort of do more of one versus the other. I think that's great, and I think we have time for all of it. Mm -hmm. I think for you, we've been wondering when you're considering images for social mm. versus the magazine. That might be a good a good topic for sure. considering mobile. Yeah, well, so mobile really like opened Tiny Atlas up to the world. So I, I didn't introduce much. So Tiny Atlas is a travel magazine, and um, I'm a photographer by trade, and then all of the photographers that are in the magazine are professional photographers, usually pretty seasoned professional photographers. Um, and um, we had the Instagram, when we started the Instagram, um, it was just like, we, I think we had like one photo or a couple photos. And then we had a Kickstarter. And at the end of the Kickstarter, I was like, oh, I should do something on Instagram. Cause I knew I had a lot of friends in sort of the Instagram community here from the Bay Area because Instagram is based here. Um, and it was like the very end of our Kickstarter. I came up with a hashtag for the magazine and I met with some friends like Michael O'Neill um, and Daniel Dent who are both professional photographers but were also early on Instagram. 
um, about like including other people and like coming up with a tag that felt inclusive. And we just met at a bar in Bernal or no, in Potrero um, one night and I came up with this tag. Like we tried different things and I was like, what about my tiny atlas? And that felt all right, you know, cause it was just people's own version of travel and their life. And, um, and so we introduced it, but the way we introduced it was just um, six people did one post where they tagged my tiny Alice like one time. Wow. And I was so new to Instagram and I'm a photographer and really respectful of people's rights for their imagery. And so I didn't even realize that I could share those pictures because it was on their pictures and it was on their feed. And, um, and then I realized like, oh, sharing is like the currency of Instagram. So I asked like Michael, like, hey, can I share this post that you tagged my tiny atlas? He said, yeah, like, of course, like, you're a few years late to this whole project. <laughs> and um, so I shared it. And but so, it, you know, we had a small audience mm -hmm. that was very small. You know, there were six posts about it, but a lot of photographers. And so some photographers started using our tag, my tiny atlas, and I looked at them every single one every day and I would pick the best ones. And then I would also just randomly send like, I don't think there were DMs then. That was probably, there were no DMs, but I would make a comment on someone's picture that I thought was good. And I was like, hey, have you seen our tag? And and um, and so then just, it kind of took off from there. And now we have like 6 million posts on my tiny atlas. I do not see them all okay. every day anymore. I try, I, I do a lot of the work on the Instagram myself. We have an Instagram, sort of stories manager, um, Lindsay, um, who does like creates a lot of the sort of features that we have on Instagram. Nice. Um, but now, but so then it just, all of a sudden, once we had the My Tiny Atlas, anybody could submit to the magazine and where we had to be very exclusive for the magazine because we want a certain quality, but also just bandwidth, like mm -hmm. to produce tons of features on the magazine is really, like takes a lot of time and work. Um, and so then all of these people joined, sort of joined the community of the magazine. And with travel, it's like accessible, not just to photographers, but sort of to anyone who can go somewhere beautiful and take a beautiful picture. We have sort of like a unified yeah. idea of what the magazine is on My Tiny Atlas, but it's it's pretty seamless. Yeah. Um, so do you yeah. have your phone attached to I the do. screen? I'd love for you to pull up uh, your Instagram sure. for Tiny Atlas, and maybe we can talk through some of the images that you find really successful, and maybe why you chose right them on. for Instagram versus a feature on the magazine. Sure. That would be. Am I start. functioning? Let's see. Yes. Um, well, I can just start speaking to, or I could put it also on here. Yeah, I see it. I can also. Paco's got it. He's ready. Paco's on top of it, guys. I can put I it on. Paco. On, I mean, that's a different experience on the um, desktop, but if you go to my computer. There we are. Um, it'd be good to go back to mobile because I don't think you can see the stories properly. Yeah, no, fine. So, um, so here's our Instagram and. So, Emily, is there. Is there like a certain kind of photo that you see and you're like, that's in Instagram versus that's something that goes on my website? The website is really highly curated. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we're really kind of slow on the website because our community is so on Instagram now. So we just launched remote, which we have a number of other stories that we have to roll out. Um, the stories, the first stories that were in there, some of them were like over a year old that took us, you know, so we're much more reactive, mm -hmm. producing way more content yeah. on Instagram than we are on the magazine. Um, the magazine, everything that we show is a feature story. So it's like usually a set of 15 to 25 images. So it would never be like a one-off. A lot of relationships that we build, maybe some, some of them start on Instagram, like mm -hmm. we meet someone. It expands like our audience and our community in the world so much. Um, but a lot of these pictures um, are, you know, maybe they're one-offs from someone or they're not a story. Right. 
Um, so these photographers maybe will pitch us stories. We do have a lot of photographers we work with just on Instagram who also will pitch us stories for our story and we curate the heck out of those as well. Like, yeah. I, and not, you know, not to make it like overly cute or something, but just to be able to tell a story. You know, like there's a lot of people just doing one image, but when we're sharing, you know, a feature, like when Tyson went to the Azores or, um, and I can show that in a minute. Um, oh, is it working? Sorry. Just to make sure. If you don't have my face, you same. can't you see have, it. I think, you have, I think you have mine too, and I can certainly yeah. pull up Tiny Atlas. Um, yeah, is it working? There we go. There you go. Oh, oh that's, Tyson. that's my profile. Hey. Should, we talk about, should we talk about me? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I'm always. All right, We're going go to talk about your story Let's in a go second. to Tiny Atlas. There we go. Tony Atlas. <laughs> Tony. That's a separate, Tony that's Atlas. a separate account. Here we well, go. So, How do you want to, there. So I would okay. love to know. Um, well, so, okay, so if you go to the main okay. gallery. That, you want to see they that? Call it. Um, so this is a photo I just put up for Croatia because um, I was trying to do one of each of the final four countries for the World Cup. Um, but that was from a trip that Aaron Kunkel, who's a commercial photographer did for the magazine. Mm -hmm. So I just used that, but that's one of the few, like, um, and then if you scroll, you can see Tyson's picture. So that's a good one to see. So there, it's pretty seamlessly integrated. So you wouldn't necessarily know, um, you know, what's what. So you could start Tyson yeah. with the first, there was one when you were traveling. I feel like before. Which one do you want? But even before then there was like, a, was it the drone So one? for you, oh, there okay, might not one. be a distinction for what might make it on the Instagram or any social feed uh, for a consumer that's on a mobile phone. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> so on the web, on the website and through the magazine, yeah. do you pick images that are specific for social because there are certain principles or? Yes. Um, so so I would love for you to kind of talk through a couple of those. <laughs> that's not here. <laughs> what? So this is the first one. Well, you want to talk about that? We don't. Well, I was just going to need to talk about my photos. Well, we could. But I mean, I mean so this is um you know, this is a photo for Instagram. We're going to choose pictures that ideally will succeed more on Instagram. Yeah. Because that's what we're asking you. How do you know that? How do you know if someone's going to succeed on Instagram? So, like for example, Tyson was drawn to very dark colors for a number of his pictures for the Azores <laughs> and having a really dark image is just people are going to scroll by it mm -hmm. in general. I love dark pictures, ah, okay. um, but it's very rare to be able to do something. So That's something a, like that is some, a banger. Yeah, that one got like a that. lot of likes. Not just likes though, actually. If you look at this, yeah. the, um, oh, not that. It's here. The, sorry. No. What do you want? I don't, uh, I don't have your, engage, I don't oh, have your yeah, engagement. Am I, I up again? I'm logged no? into my. Okay. Hey. Give me my phone. Um, <laughs> that picture, I don't remember how far back that is. That's a while ago. Okay, this one. Mm, it's June 10th, 2018. <laughs> there you go. So, 1.7 thousand hey. saves. That yeah. is huge. Like, we will sometimes have like 25 people save a picture. So, this picture works really well on Instagram. And why does this picture work well on Instagram? One, it's like exotic. Like, mm -hmm. and you don't know quite where it is. You haven't seen it. Things that are not familiar. So there's like this funny balance with Instagram where people like to th see things that they're expecting to see, mm -hmm. but then they also basically always want to be surprised and see something new. Right. So we try to err on the side of surprising and delighting them with something new that yes. they haven't seen or a new version of a place they've seen. Like we don't want you know, a picture of the Eiffel Tower, but if it's a totally different view of the Eiffel Tower, we're stoked because totally. it's something familiar that people can just access quickly. Um, and to your point, someone's asking where that is. So it says, we try to mm. only show things that we can geotag. So it's Grutas Tolon, Tolantongo in Mexico. And this is someone who had been traveling. I ha wasn't aware of her feed until this picture and she had been tra she's been traveling and so I think it's a place that's harder to get to. She's like in, you know, for the long haul, months with her husband or boyfriend in a van or whatever. And there's also <laughs> like a, a person, a small person, so that really helps with scale. Mm -hmm. And then there's this <clears throat> really 
like bright and poppy color palette. So it's white almost, and then these like electric blue um, pools. So you want to go there, which is like sort of one of our biggest rules, like across the board Instagram or the magazine that Deb sort of coined early on is like, do I want to go there? Yeah. And we, because it's a travel magazine, it's not National Geographic or it's not the news. Like so we're trying to show places that we're suggesting you might want to go. We don't necessarily know all of the details about the place, um, but trying to only show things that you want to go to and, and that we know where it is. And so if we don't know with the picture, we'll ask the photographer or we'll do some research. Um, do you have any other examples of photos that have done really, really, really well? And maybe we can talk through those. Sure. Cool. Um, could be a Tyson photo. This is also... It's probably not. <laughs> um, well, Tyson can talk to this, too. Like, what, why don't you pull up your phone? And I mean, it's like a that whole... Really, really that's well. like a whole well, conversation for me. Well, there's yeah. India. Okay, so um, we, Tyson also went to India mm. for us on a epic palace tour in Rajasthan. And, um, oh, this is... Oh, yeah, that, this one's mine. Yeah. That Ooh. one did well for me. I love that. On my, on my Instagram, it kind of exploded, like, for yeah. me. It was, yeah. like, w a way higher than usual. And yeah. I think probably for the same reasons that you've already outlined, um, people were, like, kind of fascinated with the location, and they, people, a lot of people wanted to know where, what that is. For, for those of you... Maybe tell people just because people will okay. be curious. Well, I'm curious. so it's in it's in Japan. It's uh, Hitachi Seaside Park. It's um, essentially like a botanical garden that you can walk around. What is it near? It's not really near anything. It's about a it's about a two hour train ride outside of Tokyo. Okay. Um, and it, there's a pretty there's kind of a small town nearby, but it's kind of out on its own, and it's right it's right on the seaside. How did you end up there? How did I end up there? I took a train. But like, did you just read about yeah, it? Yeah. How did you know about yeah, it? Yeah, I I got connected to uh, I was in Tokyo uh, for another project, and a friend of mine, uh, actually Pei, who's still in the studio. Hi, Pei. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. It's like, you know, Instagram is one of the one most wonderful things about Instagram is that it's constantly connecting you to people. And so it was just a weird <laughs> influx of things that came together like it often does. I was, I was in Tokyo and then some friends, other friends, people I know were also there and they were like, hey, let's get together. And, you know, I had a, I had a day uh, to myself and it was just like, what do you guys want to do? And um, There's a lot of questions uh, about travel photographers making money in social media versus traditional stuff. Yeah. My phone, I don't know how to change the Okay, thing, well, let's it, pull up. Yours likes to go to sleep It likes to go to sleep, so let's go back to just Tyson. Tyson. My phone, phone is, uh, as someone has pointed out, it's not an iPhone 10. It's still an iPhone 7 Plus, and it has a cracked screen, which you can't see, but... That'd be great. Can we just, um, like, add a crack to this one? It's in dire need of a uh, of an upgrade. Well, but so But I'm coming back to the I just want to Where are you? Okay, what? There was the whole <laughs> thing with travel photographers. I was just responding right. to David. There was a That's number great. of people like saying like it sounds like travel it sounds like paradise to be a travel photographer. It's not. And it, it's, <laughs> it's a lot not. of and then but it's maybe not. it's a lot of stress and tight deadlines is, and our yeah. traveling photographers making more money on social media or traditional positions. Yeah. I think there you go. Travel oh, thank you. is not a good way to make money, you guys. Just FYI. Like, when I started, I was an editorial photographer. I loved travel, mm -hmm. but I tried to figure out where I could work, who I could work for, where I would get paid yeah. to take photos. And, um, like, travel magazines would be, like, $150 for a day rate, which now, like, people might be like, well, that's not so bad. Um, but at the <laughs> time, like day rates for editorial were more like 500 or 700 for like 800 for editorial. And um, it costs a lot of money. I mean, part of it isn't just that like the companies that are not paying because they're jerks, like it costs money to send people places. And so if they're getting like, if a magazine's getting support from like a, a press, um, like on a press trip, 
the comp, you know, the, the destination is paying thousands of dollars to bring each person there and feed them and put them up. And, and they're also paying this um, PR firm to talk, you know, to figure out who to bring and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of hidden costs in travel, like photography. Right. It's not like if you're in the Bay Area and you're going to take a portrait of an executive, you just like drive to the office and you take a picture and so there's not all these additional costs. So when I started out, even though I love travel, I started working for business magazines because it was like 1998 and it, it, the internet was like booming and so that's what's making money. So it's I think the way that people who travel make money, if they're like getting incredible engagement, maybe they're making money for mm -hmm. like paid posts from an actual destination. But usually the only way on Instagram that people will be making money to travel is if there's a company that is wanting images for their brand in a destination. Right. So like Canon, for example, or Nikon, or Fuji, like camera companies, a bag company, Adobe, <laughs> or yeah. um, Apple, or Google, or things like that where people where you want to be in that destination. Well, where, where companies want to show their products on location, how they're being used. Yeah. It's a really travel, and Instagram obviously is a really nice way to show any sort of product. Um, and so that's how people are making money on Instagram for travel. The only people who are making money just from travel itself is by pitching, like doing a ton of work, um, both shoring up what their own skill set is, like being really clear about what they can offer clients, mm -hmm. making really beautiful PDFs about their, you know, sort of deck of saying, okay, I'm a photographer X and um, I'm going to these places and I'm reaching out to you because you have a you know, three hotels in this region. Look at how great my photography is. Look at how great my engagement is. Can I offer you sort of this package of letting me stay, paying for all my stuff there, and then I'm gonna offer you this many posts and then this many photos. That's like, really good advice. And yeah. I think some people don't know that that's available to you. So yeah. I think that's great. But like a lot of people will reach out to hotels and just ask them for free stays. And the hotels are like, I have like, I mean, I know some like luxury hotels that we were talking about doing like larger activations with, and they get hundreds of people on Instagram, emailing wow. them every day asking for free stays. But like, meanwhile, the hotel has to like pay people to clean the rooms and right. make the food and stuff like that. And um, if it's an organization, like a, if it's an organization that represents travel, um, like a leading hotels of the world or a small luxury hotels, those people don't own any of those hotels. Even like Ritz Carlton, mm -hmm. like doesn't own all the Ritz Carltons <clears throat> in the world. Like Ritz Carlton is sort of a brand franchise and all like there's groups of independent people that own each hotel. And then Ritz Carlton's like this organization that does marketing right. and branding and sort of consistency across all of the things. And so um, if you want to do a shoot for Ritz Carlton for like one hotel, if you're not like a huge influencer, you would have to be offering that hotel something other than your presence. Right. Um, because that's what they're, they're looking for. Because as well. they they have to pay all of their, you know, the, the hotel has to pay for all of their bills. Um, and then marketing is like yeah. an extra part of their thing. So like a Mark travel has detour. a question about that Seaside Park, what time of day were those photos mm. taken? They were taken in the afternoon. Um, well, no, sorry. The, the, we stuck around for a sunset. So we got there, uh, we left around noon, I think. We got there around 2, 2.30, and then we just like hung out. It was in the, it was, so it was in the fall. So the, mm -hmm. the, the days were shorter. So the thing to point out about this park is it was just the time of year. Okay, uh, let me go back. Sorry. Uh, so this park is pretty unique in that they, these bushes here are called uh, koicha bushes. And what's special about them is obviously their color. Um, so in the fall, they turn bright red. Um, they, they, they actually can verge on orange too for a while. But this is a pretty small window of time, maybe a two or three week period where they're actually 
that color. In the spring, <laughs> they turn bright blue. What? So cool. So it's like you have to go back. It's like something out of Dr. Seuss. Well, I would love to go back in the spring, and, and I hope to someday. That's but awesome. Yeah. Well, so should we talk about also like what other reasons why this picture is great? I mean, this picture. I, that's what I was gonna say. Is it almost is like the one that you were talking about earlier, where there's scale. I see a person. Mm -hmm. uh, there's great color. Yeah, there's, there's a few people lines. in there. So there were some people standing right there, and I took them out. Oh. <laughs> I didn't like them. There's like the like lines them. with uh -uh. the path, right, which you mentioned. There's a fair amount of contrast in this photo. Like, look at the difference between the shadows on uh, at the base of the mm -hmm. bushes and the and the tops. It's like they're really strong contrast there, yeah. and oh, a contrast so with the few. sky. I have a few, yeah. Um, and so this is a picture that we would. So a good picture on Instagram doesn't mean it's not good for the magazine. A good picture on the magazine, but yeah. this is one that these ones would work either. But then if you have like a really moody dark picture, like go to your picture that you had, or do you still have mm. of Anna in the in the forest? Do you have? No, that? I don't. Yeah. I took that down. So like, um, you know, dark pictures. What about that one? Like for those two skylines on the right hand side, Tyson. Which one? So like, like this one. Mm -hmm. How did that do versus one bright blue? Well, I, how something does on Instagram is like. Well, just work because Ashley is like asking. a total mystery to me, and I honestly don't care anymore. <laughs> right. Like I well, used to care a lot, and I and I don't, and maybe that's like a separate conversation. But right. I feel like for me, for me, when the time when I have spent the energy and time and really getting caught up in how well an Instagram post is going to perform the sort of less happy I am either with the choices I'm making and, or it's like a combination of disappoint, like I'm disappointed and it's just, it's a weird feeling to get caught up into and I've just decided, and it took me many years to get here, okay? <laughs> um, but I finally got to the point where I was like, I'm just not going to obsess over that uh, and, um, and I'm just going to post the stuff that I want to for me. And it's been, it's made my experience on Instagram much happier. And, and I feel like I'm back to that point where I'm feeling like I have more creative control and creative freedom to try things and fail. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it's the algorithm, whatever that is and however that works, I really don't know. But it, for me at least, it really messed with my approach and that, and uh, that it took something away from me mm -hmm. in like how I approached Instagram and and I, I feel like that there is a very um, there there is a there is a strategy involved in trying to grow your account or trying to get engagement and if you get a good post that does well typically the next post also reaches more people and mm. those are all factors that you of course consider when you're when you're trying to get noticed and get your work in front of people and even if you're trying to get jobs you want you want those things to perform well yes so you don't like completely abandon it but you also can't let it rule right. your cuz we cuz otherwise about... you won't like you you will in my case I would I would be like oh I have this beautiful portrait of somebody but I don't want to post it because I don't think it's going to do well mm. on Instagram and I think that was the wrong Totally. I For mean, me, this has been happening in art history forever. There's yeah. uh, Cindy Sherman has done a body of work that people are very um, attuned to. And then there's a story about she tried something different and nobody wanted it. Nobody wanted to put it in their gallery. So I think it's just right. kind of translated into the, the digital, which is... Well, it will translate. Um, what we were talking about wasn't just like, I'm not talking about just having something that's good, but you were talking about why we would choose something for Instagram versus not. Yeah. So like, and there, for and someone that's saying, consuming like, on the, the phone. With the two different pictures of, mm -hmm. where's, what's this one? So like. Beautiful. Um, you know, where something is more subtle like that, if I was choosing for Tiny Atlas Instagram, I probably wouldn't choose something like yeah. that as a cityscape mm -hmm. where maybe I would choose the one right above it where this it's one. more you know it's brighter and it's more graphic yeah. Instagram is tiny so like just being aware of the medium rather than like I want to have sort of the best for our Instagram I want to have the best um, story that we can tell right. um, there and 
it's different in different mediums. Yeah. So, mm. our so I have to stop you. We have a chat oh. and win for your beautiful notebook. Oh, did you guys? Yes. Notebook, which is green, so it's like a I little really bit invisible. I really hope I win it. So this is a really cool notebook made by All Swell with, um, in conjunction with Tiny Atlas. Cue the video. Cue the missions. video? Oh, what? What? Cue the video? So log in, start chatting, say hi to us, and uh, you have an opportunity to win this notebook, which you can talk about. Oh wait, so they can see us. We can be seen now. Okay. So this is a notebook. It was made, um, there's a company called All Swell, and they make notebooks, and they also do creative workshops. Um, Laura Rubin is the founder, and one side is says write, and then if you flip it over, the other side says draw, and on the draw side, it's blank, and on the right side, it's lined. But Laura stresses that you can draw on the line side or write on the blank side. I have a number of these, and I cannot write in line, so I always write on the um, draw side Ooh. myself. And then, um, so these are pictures of mine um, from two different places. Laura had sort of an idea of a green one tone mm -hmm. added to each image. So, and we have a winner. Who's our winner? Eric. Eric Sue. Yeah. There's also really cool illustrations by a really great illustrator, Jim Mezzi. Congrats, I'm Eric. Here. I'm jealous. Good job, Eric. Good job. <laughs> great job. Great job chatting. Really appreciate it. Back to mobile. <laughs> Pick uh, me. Oh, Journal next and time. Yay. Yay. You guys can get them. It's if their Instagram. Maybe if Tim, our our moderator on there. Um, can go to, I think it's Also Well Creative is their Instagram. Um, you could find the notebook if you didn't win and yeah. you still want it. So two things. The first is if you haven't submitted your portfolio, please do. And then the second is we have the next segment, which is I would love for you to go through some photos you took yesterday, yeah. maybe. Talk about editing them or even mobile okay. photography tips sure. before we go through portfolio review. Okay, great. How much time do we have? Ready for that right now? Uh, yeah, I'm ready. Um, okay, well, let's start with the mobile, shooting on a mobile tips. But it's, it's very, it's very basic and brief. Um, but uh, so if you're shooting with a phone, a mobile phone, a, a couple things that I do that maybe are helpful to you. One is I, I see a lot of people shoot this way, mm -hmm. right? They sort of brace themselves and it's important to to do that. Uh, I always shoot this way. Always? Always, yeah. Wow. Uh, I find that when I'm, I find that shooting this way, a couple things happen. One is for whatever reason, maybe it's just the way that I'm holding it, but I, I get it straighter mm -hmm. this way. For, for whatever reason, when I'm holding it this way, it's, I don't know, maybe it's just more of a swivel, but like, you know, it's hard to get something exact. You can always correct that down the road. I shoot this way mainly for the crop. Mm -hmm. I like the way that the photos come out this way, and I find that I usually, when I'm going to crop an image, I usually don't have the problem with having enough up top or down below, but sometimes I have the problem of not having enough on the side that I want. That is really interesting. So I shoot this way. So even when you're yeah. creating a vertical image for Instagram? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, the other tip is really about, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of, it, a lot of the same things apply to uh, just like regular photographer uh, photography, which is like take more photos than you think you need of mm -hmm. a thing. Um, the beautiful thing about a, shooting on a phone is that you have the ability to, um, it, because it's so small and you can hold it in your hand, it, it's, it's, it's really easy to get a lot of different angles. You can kind of get creative that way. Um, it's uh, also, it's not imposing. And we talked a little bit about this yesterday about mm -hmm. how sometimes when you're shooting, especially in like a street photography situation, how um, sometimes just having a big fat professional camera can intimidate people and, and when you're shooting on a phone 
um, more often than not, it, somehow it just people seem a little more relaxed. So mm. that's good. And as we know, like the technology on mobile devices, I've shot on the iPhone, I've shot on the uh, Google uh, Pixel Two um, pretty recently, um, and I've shot on Samsung devices, and they're just getting better and better, and the quality mm. is is like really great. Are you shooting on the native? App for camera. Oh yeah, or that's a good question. There's yeah, there's a ton of apps that you can yeah, use. Yeah, I shoot. I shoot on native camera. Um, I think, yeah, seeing also the exposure situation. Um, but there are limitations, of course, uh, still in the mobile photography. I think shooting on a, on a phone, one is one is shooting at night. Mm -hmm. there, there seems to be a lot of. Um, they, they seem to have made a lot of progress in that way, particularly the new Google Pixel, and then I think the Samsung shoots really well at night. Um, but it's it's still a limitation. Uh, it's all, and then and then of course the big the biggest limitation is just the inability to really zoom in on something, mm -hmm. right? So you um, so there there are a couple things that you can do. You can get lens attachments. Um, have you ever a, used those? I use them all the time. Awesome. In fact, there's a company called Moment Lens. Who I recommend really highly. They are, they're a cool company in a lot of ways. Um, the lenses are really nice. The lenses are really nice, Is this and it? they give you, yep, and oh, they, they give you. Uh, Ooh, they have so cases I, so as well. So, I, so I have a case. I have a moment case oh, right now, too. which you wow. maybe can't see. It'd be hard yeah. to see, I guess, <laughs> from that camera, but. Um, yeah, maybe you can kind of see there. Wow. They, these little grooves here, so the lenses themselves, I can just twist on. Yeah. And they have, twist like, off. Moment and other companies have ones that have a battery pack. I think that's, yeah. like, a couple things about shooting on mobile is, like, if mobile, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but if mobile is, like, your camera, if you're like, you know what, I'm going to bring all these cameras, but really I'm going to shoot on my phone, like, optimize for your phone. So do whatever you can so that if you're going on a long walk, like you're not going to, your phone's not gonna get full. You know, you're gonna have a phone that's big enough yeah. and your battery's not gonna die. And if you want lenses, that you have those lenses. Like you can really, there's a lot of companies that make some nice accessories. Moment is a really great one in that they have it like as a system where you can get their case with the battery and, wow. and they have lenses and they have like lens cases that are like nice that protect them from getting scratched and stuff like that. So is there one that you have used on this? Um, you well, really like? you know, the, I've, I've, I've had a nice long sort of relationship and partnership with some people at Moment Lens, so they've, nice. they, they send me lenses pretty regularly. So I have the new wide lens mm -hmm. that I use. Um, I'm really interested in the new anamorphic lens that they've, that Check they've just out. made. That's their latest thing. That's actually for shooting video, um, primarily, and it, and it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I, I want to point out, there's a comment there from Tom. Uh, LaRoc, hope, LaRoche, uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, I'm sorry Tom. Um, but he mentions Cortex Cam app, which is uh, is actually a really great uh, app to shoot. It's a camera, but it's a really great app for shooting a night exposure. Um, you can use a tripod. Uh, tripod, that's, an, that's another accessory that you should get. There's, there's lots of them out there. Um, I'm just going to mention Gorillapod, uh, mm -hmm. but I, there, you know, it's not like... A, it's just that was the first one that popped to mind. They're really small. You can fit them easily in a bag, and they have wrap around. They have like a wrap around situation, so These are cool. you can just attach it to a post or a fence or something, anything really, and you can have a tripod. You can do. There's um, there's lots of uh, time lapse type apps out there. there. I mean, there's so many amazing apps that you can download on your phones. Um, depending on if you have iOS or Android, um, and that will sort of help you Are you typically capture. using a, a certain amount of those things? Are you always trying and I mean, implementing I, li I like points? to play around with them. I, I shoot less specifically on a mobile device now than I do mm. um, now that I'm... All of my all of my the cameras that I have, I can move those files over to my phone. So I don't want to sort of pretend like I'm an expert in it, but uh, I do play around with apps. Sometimes, you know, the best camera is the one you have with you, and sometimes this is the only thing I have with me, and so you want to be comfortable and confident capturing using uh, a mobile device because uh, yeah. a lot of times that's, 
that's all you have. That's what you got. David yeah. was asking about GoPro, which you are newly a fan of, right? Do uh, any of you use yeah. photos from video? I, take I don't take stills from video. You use the GoPro but photo I, mode. Um, I have, sh I, so I did, I, I, I took a trip to Belize earlier this year and I specifically got a, I bought a GoPro specifically to get uh, some underwater stuff. The, uh, my experience with underwater photography, which is very little, it, I've had just a, a, a couple examples, but I've, I've had two, I had two bad experiences. <laughs> yeah, that was in unfortunate. In which um, <laughs> twice, uh, twice I, I had the underwater housing sort of leak and, you know, these are, um, one was a, one was just a, uh, one was the fault of the, uh, I'm going to go ahead and blame the rental company. Well, I won't mention who it was, but they, they didn't send an O-ring as we had all the equipment except for one tiny O-ring and that was enough to uh, let some, some salt water in. Hmm. So that was a bad experience. The second time, it was my fault. I didn't, I didn't fix it. Uh, I didn't have it sealed properly. So um, it's a, it's a, uh, it's something I'm still working on. Uh, but for this project, I was like, I'm gonna just play it safe. And I was, uh, I was investigating like underwater cameras, and uh, I came, I just came, came to the Hero Six GoPro uh, as just like, a, it just seemed like it was going to be the easiest thing. What I was trying to do here, I'll show you some photos. I was trying to accomplish these like half in, half out, under. <laughs> so it's called, Let's like, play a, a game. game, sorry. It's called a 50-50 shot. Yeah, 50-50 shot. Um, where is the best place? Someone's talking up. about how if you buy a lens, then and then there's a new phone, then it doesn't necessarily work on the new phone, and that is an issue. And I think, um, you know, like moment they have the lenses that change with the cases, and so mm. I think you would be upgrading ideally like a case. But then the, the oh, position changes too. Horizontal. Um, so yeah, it is an issue, and I think the you know the phone companies are trying to sort of keep up with that by adding additional lenses into the phone cameras. Like now, there's a really good, pretty decent portrait camera on the iPhone, and the Pixel, one the bigger Pixel has a really <laughs> nice um, longer lens as out. well. Yeah. Um, Oh, Someone's sure. looking at yeah. your missed calls. No, yeah, there's a story there. There, the, I, I, it's not a very interesting one, but I, <laughs> I, I'm doing some research for. I'm doing a little bit of research for a friend, on like, uh, the, 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 like, the analytics companies, and so like I, I got. Like I was online and I got connected to this company that helps you find them, and they've just been really aggressive at like. <laughs> they're like I gave them my hire. phone number, and now they're like really aggressive at like trying to like win that business. And I'm just like, I'm done. Okay, wait, stop it's calling like a car me. But, salesman. Uh, yeah, it could be that or people looking for money. Who knows? But uh, I keep getting calls saying I'm gonna get taken in by the local cops. So I don't know. Yeah. Watch so out. I have, um, so these were the results. These are all from a GoPro um, and I was shooting in rapid mode. I bought, so I bought the GoPro, which was, it seemed like a good investment. It was, I think, I want to say 399. So mm. it wasn't in terms of a camera. It, it didn't seem like that, that huge of an investment. And um, I think the quality is pretty good. Oh, I bought something else too. I bought a, like a $35 dome uh, and I bought that specific. That's not a underwater, those are drones. Back to the underwater, um, and this like it was just like a dome. You like you don't need to have a dome because a because a GoPro can go underwater up to I think a depth of about I want to say 50 feet or maybe it's even 50 meters. But not, uh, bad. not that I went that deep at all. So, but I bought the dome so that I could get these like wave wave shots. Let's see if I have any other good examples of like half in, half out. Yeah, here we go. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I made a few mistakes though. You, you'll see up here that I didn't, you have to continuously wipe the dome and keep it clean. So there's like some water spots there. So, you know, but it was my first time. Do you remember who? This was pretty rad. I mean, there were That's like fish and amazing. stuff. Do you remember who made the dome? No, I don't. Or if there's, if you guys can 
put up, because I think it, that's, if you don't know what he's talking about, it might just be weird. Um, no, it's a, it's, a, just it's it. a dome. You can go on to Amazon or whatever or, and find these things. It was, I can, can remember anything. how much I spent. I spent like 35 bucks and it was good. If, if someone really wants to know what this dome is, just DM me and I'll <laughs> Does it I'll look like this? What it was. Do you want to throw up my, yeah. my screen? Yeah, it looked exactly like that. Okay, there that you go. may be the one. Yeah, just if people But there's like know. several, there's several models out there. So I don't want to, I don't want to incorrectly. In this, in this yeah, way? I was holding it like that, and um, was this basically you? You're like, hey. <laughs> that's is me. That's me. Oh my no, god, I'm sorry. No, it's yeah, yeah. I, uh, yeah. I mean, Hello. so you can, uh, <laughs> you can dome. You can dome. You, can dome you need if you that. Want to. Yeah. I don't know that you could do it on an iPhone. It, the the tricky thing, of course, the thing about the dome is that you're increasing your surface area, so the wave. Uh, it just it, trying to capture that wave kind of shot. If you don't have a big dome, if you're you're, you're essentially trying to capture it on your lens. So mm. on a mobile device, that would be holy moly. You'd have to be either so lucky in your timing, or you'd have to be the, just the most amazingly precise and awesome photographer to capture that on a. Because of course we're talking about a tiny little space yeah. on your on your lens. So. Anywho, uh, so, we've gotten completely off topic. Fine. We're good. We've um, got time. We've got forty-three minutes until. A we wanted to do review. some editing, right? One, yes, yeah. I would love. I would love to do some editing. Or if you have any more tips on mobile specific. I mean, those are my main tips with shooting on mobile. I want to do one quick one. Yeah, what's your um, quick which? One? If you guys go to my camera, um, is there's so many people. This seems basic if you are always on your phone like we are, but if you're not, um, a lot of people don't know how to lock exposure and on their phone. Um, so like, if you press and hold on your phone, <laughs> like <that>. um, <laughs> you'll get like a, this square that pops up, this like yellow bouncing square on an iPhone. I think it's kind of similar if I recall on the Pixel too. Mm -hmm. On the Pixel, I think mm -hmm. it, there's like a, a little lock a little icon of a lock that comes up. And then on the side you have this sun and you can like raise the sun or lower the sun and it will stay the same through when you lock multiple it. exposures unless you completely change. No, even sometimes it resets, but here it didn't reset. So if you're shooting quickly and then especially if you're trying to get like a motion or action and then you wanted to do like a burst mode, so those are two really simple things where if you're trying to get like a lifestyle shot of a person walking on a hill like we, we might have last night and you, if, if you're shooting a person on a hill in, at sunset, like the camera's gonna wanna get the sky or the landscape and the person's probably like closer to the landscape but you want it to be even lighter. And so if you lock in on that person, get the right exposure for their skin tone or for what you think the picture should look like and then shoot, but maybe if you're walking or they're walking, do some where you're bursting, then all of a sudden you're like really locked in on the exposure that you need. And I think a lot of people just That's don't great. know that. Yeah, I love showing that trick. And they're like, oh you my God. Actually, you just trick. remind me of one more tip. Um, Thomas, the um, two, two more tips. One is uh, often you often you you find that the thing you want to shoot there's like a window or like if you've ever oh. shot a photo out of a plane window <laughs> mm -hmm. or out of a, you're in a big building and you want to shoot outside of it um, put your put your camera flat to the glass completely flat to the glass and then take the photo don't try to sh if you're shooting back a little bit you're gonna get a you might get a little reflection in that thing mm -hmm. and those are that's like impossible mm. to get out. The That's other cool thing one. was, um, if you don't have a tripod, and this is like a really silly trick, but um, I've used my shoe before <laughs> as, a, as tripod. a tripod. Yeah, those are two really good kind of. You can you can usually one. use the heel of your shoe as a like oh, a lean, base, okay. and you just like pop your phone in and kind of snuggle it in there. It's like a and micro. Keep it. It's I like mean, a Smurf tripod. I've seen people do it with rocks or even like packs of cigarettes or books or things like that. Uh -huh. But the shoe is. Is there a photo of you with one shoe on? There with is. The phone. There with is the actually. Phone. There's a photo. There is a photo of this in action in real life. I want and to see it, this. And this is a. So this is my. Um, this is my like Finsta 
Ooh. my my Finsta, which is my fake Instagram account. Sorry for that. that uh, so if we go, <laughs> sorry for that. It's just kind of a, um, it's my throwaway account. It's like mm -hmm. where I can just be myself and be fun. But I believe there is a photo of me from years ago. Wait, wait, what's that? No, we're not going to that one. <laughs> no, we're not going to that one. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to that one. No, I'm kidding. Here, here it is. With the shoe. Here it is. It's That's in amazing a shoe. That this you is have proof a that I it. actually use this. That. I have done this. This is like an Great tip, inc incredible tip. Seriously. Here's here's uh, here's a close up of the the shoeless foot. <laughs> <laughs> notice the shoeless foot. No, no, notice anything else? Nothing uh, else. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, and uh, oh, and I gave a shout out to Average Cam Pro, which was the uh, app that I used for that. Average Cam Pro. It takes <laughs> Some multiple exposures and makes a cool photo. Somebody good, says, or Tom says, lean on a full Snapple bottle. I like that it's not just like a bottle, but it's a Snapple <laughs> it bottle. It can't be like, empty. Is it better? I've given Snapple? you the no like that's the knowledge and where you, you take it is you up to you. you. Snapple bottle, however, however you get there. That's awesome. But, Can I have one of your shoes? What if my shoe doesn't work? Yeah, I don't know, lady. I'm not an expert in lady <laughs> yeah, like shoes, but um, men's shoes tend to work pretty well. Or, okay, so I'm gonna be investing. Have yeah, to be Van, Vans really work well for this. <laughs> Shout out to Vans. Tea. Hire us for a full campaign on shooting with That's your right. shoes. Yeah, I like it. Um, okay, this is a shoe campaign. Okay, <laughs> we've exhausted all the mobile tips. <laughs> okay, so well, let's edit mobile photos. Well, you guys went somewhere yeah. yesterday. Yeah. I want to hear all about We're it. Pull up some photos from yesterday. Um, I want to see it. I want to feel it. I want to feel like I was there. Uh, we went to my favorite place in San Francisco, and every time that I'm in town, I demand that I'm taken here and that people join. So um, we'll go. We'll go this way because uh, a lot of these are. So these, uh, some of these are mobile, but um, the the bulk of them I think were taken with the Leica Q. Uh, which is just the camera that I brought on this particular trip. So, um, I mean, when I came to San Francisco, I just packed that one. I left the drone and everything else at home. It's pretty sweet that, like, just, I know that we're here for this, but, like, as an actual user, the, um, that you download the, your photos to your computer I, on Lightroom, and then they're just there on mobile. It's really cool. Yeah, it's That's rad. incredible. So um, I uh, so we talked a lot about yesterday about planning around landscape photography, yeah. and so I just feel like it's probably worth mentioning again that you know half half the battle, more than half the battle in this case, is just getting to the right location and getting there at the right time. Yesterday we had these conditions. If you if anyone here watching is familiar with Mount Tam, we call it Mount Tam, but it's Mount Tamalpais. It's a state park. It's in, it's just north of San Francisco, just north of the Golden Gate Bridge in um, Marin County, right? Yep. And it's, uh, it's a full commitment in terms of like leaving the city and getting there. It can take you like up to an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes to actually get here. So you want to go when the conditions are right. And so when we talk about conditions, what we're looking for is right back here you see that that's the fog that's a bank of that's a bank of fog which is forming down here below is like Stinson, Stinson Beach mm -hmm. if that fog wasn't there you would see it but it but you want to go when it's uh, I mean you know whatever if you're I, I want to go I'll talk for myself if, if you're, you're Tyson, Tyson you want to go on when a day Dan? when there's fog that Under is Dan hat. Tom right there <laughs> shout out to Dan Tom he'll be on at mm -hmm. one um, Dan did a couple things right yesterday he wore this nice white stripey shirt and so I was putting Dan in a lot of my photos yesterday because he just was a nice contrast to the trail mm -hmm. and so anyway we we got we got lucky but you can also can make that judgment if it's like a clear sunny day and there's no fog then maybe it's like oh, well let's not go to Mount Tam let's mm -hmm. go somewhere else. Jan is saying he's never seen fog like that that is it's a classic like San Francisco yeah. It's great. Fog. The fog in San Francisco is so famous that it has a name. Um, his name so is Carl. His name is Carl. And there's like Instagram accounts, Twitter accounts, the, yeah. um, this all about Carl funny. the fog. This, this one might be my favorite in it's terms beautiful. of the composition. So why don't we why don't we edit that one? Yes. Yeah. So you you shot this not on your mobile phone, mm -mm. but 
we are editing in mobile, which is cool. We're editing mobile because that's how I do One everything. One thing that Tyson said, and people, before, some people are annoyed by this, but is I don't the first care. thing that he does is he crops. So he said today that he always shoots in horizontal, which is interesting. And then the first thing he he does is crop. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So on what maybe just talk people through what you're doing. Um, so you're looking at the different. I'm cropping. Crop. Yeah. Um, yeah, and on the options. first day, if you remember. You were saying that if you crop it and you don't get it to a place you like, then you move on. Well, yeah, so kinda, I don't, it's interesting. I, you know, I don't know. Look, I, I'm friends with a lot of photographers and they, they the crop is like the, the exact last thing that they do. Yeah. Um, which, because they don't want to be restricted, they want to work on the whole image and then they don't want to, but, but I, you know, I don't know. Everyone's workflow is maybe different. I like to crop first because I get a sense of whether or not I want to spend, if I really want to spend time with it, mm -hmm. you know. So if the crop doesn't work, then I'm gonna, I, I don't want to, you know, I'm yeah. just gonna move on to another photo. And when you're shooting, um, are you giving yourself room to crop usually? Yeah, because always, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a key thing. And I think that the other thing about the crop thing versus crop is like you can, like especially in a tool like Lightroom, you can always go back. You can, you know, I can, I can, I, you know, I'm not losing that mm -hmm. by cropping it. I'm just, it's just helping me. What is your red dot? Decide. Situation? That's my. That's showing me. That's showing Detach. the the audience at home. It's really cool. Or at work or wherever they're viewing. Pub. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, know. Where where are you guys watching? Yeah, where from? is everybody yeah. right now? Quick. Uh, um, yeah, that it's just showing people where my finger's going so that they can sort of follow him. But is it an app? No, you can no, turn it's it in on the settings. in the settings. Oh. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Paco hooked that up for me yesterday. Where Sky, it's in the settings. Sky is what? a wizard. Paco's going to get a couple shout outts. For one thing, Paco was with us last night at yeah, Mount he Tamil Pius. He came. He came. And he took some photos. Wait, so how did he you do that? Photos. He's going to make a spark page about Discover or is that a Paco? Is that a Paco setting thing that we don't know how to do? It's in the Lightroom settings. Do, do you want me to go there right yeah, now? Yeah, I think it's cool. Someone's actually in an Irish pub. Hi, Walter. Yay! Yes, Walter. Also, someone. Can we give? Can he get a, a reward for being in an <laughs> Irish in pub? A pub? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's up to Gus. Um, so, a good camera in the five hundred, six hundred dollar range, Rodney. What oh. kind of camera? Uh, I guess well, an iPhone. I just. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, I think it's a little. Are more than a little that, more, like but. <laughs> So I just did a project, um, so I'm not paid to say this, okay, but right. I just, I did, for full disclosure, I did just did a project with Canon mm -hmm. on the, the Rebel TI-7, mm. and I believe that is in around the $700 range. I no might way. be, and what did it, it might be a little more. Does it include a lens? No, that's just the body, it's but. The body. Um, but Sometimes they do, like they have little packages. The kit, especially at Costco. Shout yeah. out to Costco. I, I don't know, actually don't Places know. Places like Costco would be a great place to look. Like Costco, Best Buy, yeah. Target. Like they do sell like fancy electronics now. And they're, the cameras, the DSLR cameras in are incredible for like what you can get for that price at this point. Um, you know, you could get a film camera for a hundred dollars and spend uh, the next 500 on processing <laughs> if you want to learn photography. There um, you go. That's one. And yeah, it doesn't quite buy you the best mobile phone right. it's in the world, but it's close and that is a good one too. So if you've been, so you, if you've been following along the last couple of days, you know that you've probably, maybe you've already heard me mention that I don't do a, a I don't do a significant amount of editing or I don't like to do a mm -hmm. lot of editing. I, 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 I'm always, I'm constantly amazed by how much you can do. Um, and sometimes it's necessary, but um, when possible, I try to get, um, I, I, I try to put myself in a position where the conditions are such that it doesn't matter so much what camera you use or what, mm -hmm. in other words, the location is dope the lights dope and you've got the right subject. So yeah. that's, again, I can't stress that enough. That mm -hmm. is that is the most important thing. Um, also, I used the Sunsetter app yesterday for, oh, you did? for my shoot, so awesome. thank you for Was that. Was it called the Sunsetter app? Yeah, Okay. it was great. I know, I mentioned There's that yesterday. There's kind of like a sun I... setting on us. It's gorgeous. Yeah. 
So, but I was in the fog, and you are yeah. you're above it, which is right. gorgeous. So I, I think um, so, but then just stylistically, you know, and I guess I'm saying this kind of apologetically, like uh, stylistically, I don't, I just don't like to do a lot of with my images too. I like it to be as true mm -hmm. to realistic. So having said that, there are things here about this image that, you know, I think can be improved, um, and, and maybe so you guys you've have done opinions. Some. So I, I played around with the warmth a little bit. I've sharpened it a little bit. Um, one thing I'm always doing and maybe you do this too, is I'm, I'm constantly, I'm, you know, I, this is, so Dan is kind of my subject. He's in the, he's important to this photo, I think, because it's important to have something in the foreground. And so I'm always kind of looking, I'm keeping him uh, top of mind in terms of like what I want in the photo. So I'm zooming in, constantly zooming in and zooming out. In fact, I like doing this because sometimes when you zoom in, you might actually realize like, ooh, I like you know what? Cool I vertical. like that better. Yeah. So we, again, we can you can keep cropping in. You just you know you can't. I mean you can always crop out, but I I find like I go deeper and deeper. So like it, the crop isn't final. It's just the first step, and then it gets. Sometimes it'll get better. So I don't know. I maybe maybe I like that better. Yeah. I was originally thinking what I like about the composition of this photo are the two hills. This mm -hmm. hill versus this hill, and I guess there's kind of a third hill here. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think at home? I don't know. I think this well, maybe is a more see. interesting photo. That's pretty cool. These folks in the back, so I maybe, didn't even know. So maybe let's do that. Let's go with that that instinct, that impulse. Let's let's go and. I can't unsee it now. Yeah. I have. Yeah. It has to exist let's, forever. Let's come in on a tighter crop, and maybe we can still keep that. And where's a Emily? A little bit of that hill. Is Emily in the shot? Emily is not here, but that's Benjamin Heath. Who has a really awesome Instagram account? These are three these girls. are three strangers. <laughs> they were watching the sunset, and we were like, click, click. So, click. I, so here's okay. So here, guys, you guys chime in here and tell me what you think. I don't know if this is a distraction or not. Does that help the image having these bodies back there, or does it take away? Maybe um, it takes away a little bit. It takes Maybe away a little, a little bit. bit. Can you get rid of them. Let's get rid of them. Sorry, Benjamin. Do it. So Benjamin Heath, he's too small. Honestly, he's not watching. Well, Dude, what did you do? Yeah, what are we doing over here? You know, oh, this that, is we're uh, putting Ben in the totally sky. Messing Healing that brush. Up. Yeah, we need to completely. Someone says too small to that. be worried about. Someone says takes away. So, thanks, Alexandra and Eric. For I'm just feedback. using I'm just using a healing tool here to kind heal of heal away to get rid of him. Bye. Um, these uh, I I kind of like them. I People. like those three in a row. That one's less distracting to me. Yeah. Plus, it gives you, if you, I mean, you have to look really close, but I, I think it gives you a sense of scale. Mm hmm So, I mean, can we just give, can we just a shout out to the, to that Leica Q lens here? <laughs> I mean, yeah. you can see how far back I am away from them, and it's a pretty small camera in terms of just, you know, it's only a 28 mil millimeter lens. What but, aperture are you shooting at? Uh... That's a good question. I don't know what that what it was. Hmm. What do you usually do? Do you have like a default that you usually do? Um, no. No. I don't have a default. Like for for landscapes, do you usually have it like really close down or just yeah. whatever? Yeah, seems um, kind of close. Like, down. well, how far this close down does that This one is probably down. Go? Does it I think it goes 16? down to no. I think it goes down to a one or a two eight other two way. six two five. Other way. Oh, the other way. I don't know. I wouldn't. I don't ever have it at this far, at that high. Um, so like, yeah. I think often on like a point and shoot type so, of camera, it would be like sixteen. So when I'm shooting on a when I'm shooting on my Canon bodies and I'm shooting landscape, a lot of the time I actually like to shoot on aperture priority. Hmm. So and then that for something like this, it would probably come in around a ten or twelve or something like that. Yeah. I would imagine. I'm yeah. guessing that that camera probably goes to only like 16 or something mm -hmm. like a medium format camera you might get up to like f64 on a 4x5 yeah. or something like that but um so it's cool to see that so i'm pretty great. i'm pretty happy with this photo in general mm -hmm. the the i love having these clouds how do we feel about the sky i there's not a lot of there's not a lot of detail in the sky i don't know that i love it but one thing we talked a little bit about this yesterday and it's just like a stylistic thing but some people do not like, um, some people like to use highlights to kind of really blow that out. Mm -hmm. And I think in, this is one of those rare cases. I usually, 
I sometimes I go the opposite. I go take like, it down. I take it all the way down mm -hmm. just to get detail in the sky, but there's none. So there's something about the color in that sky that's bothering me a little bit. Um, I don't know if it's do bothering you. Selective. But if I bring it up, if I bring the whole image up, the highlights, you see how I just kind of, I've lost that sky now a little bit. Mm -hmm. And you want to it lose it. It was before and after. Yeah, maybe in this photo I do. You're finding it distracting. A little bit. Cool. So, I don't know. I don't know what else to do here, guys. Uh, well, are, you, are you happy with it? Yeah. I'm happy enough to this point where we can move on to another photo. Cool. Because Show me we don't have all dang day. Uh, okay, here's a fun one. This is going to be, let's try this one. Ooh, different color temperature. Oh, whoa. Well, actually, actually, I played around with that imager earlier this morning. Whoa. So let's take it back. Let's go back. Let's go back to where we were when we started. <laughs> let's reset it. Okay. Reset. reset. Reset, bro. Nice. Am I not doing that right? I thought I, I thought I was, uh, Oh, sorry. Reset all. Reset all. Maybe it is. No, that's not. Didn't well, in like the that. meantime, you have 24 minutes to submit a, your portfolio. Oh, so okay, <laughs> thank you. Hurry up. You know what, guys? I have I have a lots of other images of Mo, my friend Mo, walking up this thing. This was weird. This was a just a weird light situation. The light is obviously <laughs> on the other side of this mountain, this hill. And, um, you know, so nothing's been done to this. Nothing's been edited. You don't have any light really showing the grass. So, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if this was lit up, it would, the grass would look really uh, almost like a, a light brown. Yeah. So it does, we have this kind of like, because of it, you have this kind of a strange color that I think is a little kind of out of this world. So let's embrace that and really go for, I think like this is an opportunity to kind of go for something kind of wild. Um, let's go wild. <laughs> let's go wild, we it's might as well. It's 12 o'clock, let's go wild. So I, you know, I, temperature is always a thing that I play with usually first. Um, I mean, you can see how we could go like Dr. Seuss wild if we really oh, yeah. wanted so to. You You're really into it, seusical right now. If you, mm, I, if you warm <laughs> it up, Tyson. Did I mention that yesterday? <laughs> Thank, yeah. I. The, yeah, if sorry. you warm it up, mm -hmm. you'll see like that's what it sort of looks like. It's that's, closer. That's yeah. what it looked like in yeah. real life. But some, you were responding to like the color temperature that was happening, and you like what it looked like. Kind of liked leaning it. Leaning yeah. into the color yeah. temperature. Yeah. And when you're shooting on your camera, do you have mm. it on automatic white balance, or are you choosing a white balance based on so, the situation? So uh, yesterday, I in in yesterday's case, I did have it on automatic white balance because we were um, because there were so many different locations it was just yeah. easier and because the light was changing quite a lot it depend you're going up you're going down but um, so I can't make up my mind if I like this or not mm. but well, I maybe think folks I, can chime in I think I I think I do so I like it um, so this photo is uh, Let's let's play around with the contrast. So we did some color. We cropped. Mm -hmm. Now we're in contrast. And so exposure. I I love to, I usually love to to increase exposure and contrast um, together. Usually, I don't know. Do we see it before? Yep. After. That's yeah. after. Yeah. Nice. So. People are feeling the, the color. People are the feeling the color. color. I like the color. Yeah, I, I mean it. Too. I mean it's not that unreal. I mean it, it's not that big of a difference between what it really looked like. Andrea so. saying a selective gradient might be good. That's what we were talking about. She was with us yesterday, right, with Dan, um, and Dan was doing. Dan's big on the the yeah. gradient tool. He is. And, He's um, like a wizard. Really. Yeah. I. Sure, we can mess around with that. We'll see. You can I'm, always take it back. I'm not it's non destructive. I'm not as good as Dan at it. So let's see. Yeah, okay. We want to. Hello. Hello. Yes. Perfect. You picked your. Kind of. Now it, we pick a color. Ooh. We could really go wild, huh? Let's see what's going on. How wild are you going to go? We're gonna make it kind of green. That may be too green, but 
Does that give you to wow. give you a sense of like now we're in Ireland. We're back. We're in the Irish pub. <laughs> we we wanted it sounded so appealing that <laughs> we just changed. Buy me a drink, Is Walter. Our friend, who was it that was in the Irish pub? Was phone? Walter. Walter, you still in the Irish pub? <laughs> Can we get a, an opinion from Ireland on that? I, to me, that's like a little, I, I went too far. I went too green. What if we tone that down a little bit? Yeah. But that's fun, yeah. I mean, so fun. I was kind of digging on the vibe. I was digging on the kind of bluish hue, but. Uh, cool. Yeah. What's going on in the, that's better. The, the light in the background? Am I seeing that? There's like, it's, it's really, or is that your screen? screen? It's okay. really subtle. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> this? Yeah. The people at home can't see oh, okay. that. I don't think, hopefully. No, they yeah, can't. I, have a, I cracked my screen and now I have weird light Was bubbles. Was it in relation to underwater housing? I need a new phone. <laughs> no, no, but I did drop this in the ocean too. But <laughs> I'm having a tough couple months with my gear. And uh, so um, anyway, so that was a great suggestion. That is a great um, suggestion. Let's, can we do, can we do one? So this isn't from Mount Tam, but I thought this one might be fun. On the way? No, so actually, I just wanted to show how cool it was yesterday, yeah. the fog. Anyway. No, it was on the way. No, no, no. Um, I wanted to maybe do a photo that's not from Mount Tam, but it was from. Um, I've been waiting for this photo. It's actually from India. Oh, cool. So, uh, I don't know, if, if you guys are okay, I thought it might be fun to edit this one. Yeah. Raise your hand if you're okay with it. Everyone, okay, okay, great. Raise your hand. <laughs> Majority rules. So, um, so cool. I, 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 I think this image is fun, and here's what I think is fun about it. So I, 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 so I shot it in typical fashion, like much wider than I need. I think on its own, this photo is not good. There's a lot of things that are distracting. I don't like the composition of that. Mm -hmm. I don't like this tree at all. I mean, maybe some people think that tree is interesting, but I. I don't have the full tree, so it bothers me. It's the same thing with that little mountain there. We don't have the full mountain, so it bothers me. You're full mountain this, or nothing. I'm a full mountain guy, <laughs> or give me nothing. No, give me half mountains, because I will be out of here. So um, that uh, that doesn't bother me as much, because that's like a cool little archway. But Ooh. but here's I think if Where's we the crop? if we zoom in, uh -huh. This really has a. This really ends up kind of transforming into like a cool. Yeah. I think, composition. Well, it's fun. So the let's step wells do it. are also like so. These are step wells, which is like mm. this historical thing in India, mm -hmm. um, and there's a bunch of them. This one is in really good condition. This is in Jaipur, right? Very cool. It is in Jaipur. Um, yeah. Correct. But like, Tyson really likes geometric images, and then this is yeah. like a crazy geometric. Place. Yeah. Um, so it's a fun here. sort of sweet spot. Custom. And the way you're cropping in, it kind of takes you out of the context and gives it Ooh, this yeah. own otherworldly place. I mean, uh oh. Maybe we do like that tree. No, no. no. I, I, I liked how like you had it, it yeah. but. We don't like that tree. You had no sky, which I think was I thought great. that was yeah. so cool. Yeah, the sky and is like half not, of that the window. The sky just That's isn't beautiful. interesting. So something like that. Yeah, Escher. Everyone always it's definitely has an Escher vibe. Escher, yeah. Okay, yeah. Chris I see says what you're no tree, about. so no tree. we'll do no tree for you, Chris. What's <laughs> Ireland vote? What's Ireland's vote? <laughs> yeah. All right. So uh, Walter's, Walter's busy. About the crop. People um, are getting excited about this. Let's photo. let's let's do contrast first this time around. Um, I was yeah. So these are very, I mean, that's that's almost extreme for me. Someone from India chiming in. Is there Tina someone from India? Saying Yay. that it's a beautiful pic. Sick. Man, India is... Uh, we're all fans. Like, we're big fans. Tyson went for us, and then again. we went with Tiny Atlas, um, with Kamalan as a group, mm -hmm. with Dan and Joe and um, Elka. And so great. So what's, inter kind of in love what's interesting colors. about this, and you guys, you guys may have noticed I'm not using presets. I don't, I don't, I don't use princess, uh, princess. No princess presets I don't use, for you. I don't really, I don't really use presets. I, I feel like every photo deserves its own mm -hmm. sort of attention, and, uh, and that's part of the fun of it for me. Yeah. It may be to my detriment because my photos end up like maybe not being as cohesive, or uh, my style tone is maybe mm. not as like obvious, and that's definitely a strategy. And so mm. you know. Um, we have it, a question on what time of day this was taken. This was pretty early in the morning. We were we couldn't get there right as the sun was going up because we had to wait for it to open. Mm -hmm. But we were the first people there. 
to like eight o'clock. Yep, and we bribed the guy. Bribed. We we gave a a tribute to the guard who was uh, watching this area mm. just to like let us play in there. Nice. Um, but you know, um, for a location like this, for any location that you're really excited about, you uh, you want to get there. You want to get there when people aren't, and you also want to get there during the good light. So. Mm. Um, what makes this photo for me is the is that we do have shadows. Um, well, also just a production thing. Mm -hmm. You have a model as well, right? So I had a model. Um, My friend Alice was there. Yeah. If was, you you know if you think that you really like the scale of a person in a landscape shot or in a travel shot, mm -hmm. you have to either be prepared to put yourself in that picture or maybe like go with a friend or think about it. And yeah. Yeah. Um, that scale really makes a difference. Um, yeah. So, I, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about the, I mean, I've upped, I've upped the warmth a little bit because mm -hmm. we have warm colors. Now, the one thing that is, isn't warm is Alice's dress. She, her dress is like, it's actually kind of blue. She's actually out of focus. This is a bad photo. No. You know what, we're, we're <gasps> He's bailing. Did you guys know? Did you guys see that? No. She's completely out of focus. Let's find a photo where she's in focus. It's better. Okay. Much better. Oh, All right. You Sorry, feel better guys. about that? Whew. Reset. So close. That was almost a. Yeah. So while you're resetting, I think mm. for the cropping, okay. like there's a lot of different set you can do. Just mm. like your own, your own version of a crop, right? Or you can mm. use one of these set dimension ones. Like mm -hmm. Dan, Tom, for example, uses four or five always. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like four or five, a lot. Um, I I like custom too because I I put borders on my final Instagram post. Mm -hmm. I know that probably like for some people is really annoying, but couldn't care less. <laughs> Dan does too, like but it. I think he, he put keeps borders. It. He's always like just four by five, and then there's also just mm. the tilting. Mm. Now I'm, now the I'm really, X Y. I'm getting, well, and then oh like, the axis. A, yeah, you know, you're talking about this. Big fan. This is probably my favorite. To straighten? Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get it, yeah. So for a shot like this, you do you do want to do a little bit of this. Yeah. That's definitely part of the crop. So um, I think I mean, I think we just did that. I think we just fixed it. In this case, you know, I mean, um, in this case, I, I probably, I may have been like one step above or, you know, I, I wasn't like dead on, but clo pretty close. But you're not always like that, especially, this is especially important when you're shooting with your phone because you're the way you're holding it you, you so know. Jan's saying for this one he likes one one you like the square you want square well Jan you know what he's feeling generous Buddy, you're gonna get exactly whatever you want today <laughs> I actually That's like that too nice yeah that is nice it looks good cool it's fun do you ever crop to square now I do okay. yeah yeah I mean uh I, li I like square crop. Uh, it's funny. I like I like the portrait crop now more than anything. Mm -hmm. But um, I think I don't know. I think it maybe it's just because it takes up more real estate on your phone. The phones are getting right. the screens are getting bigger. But um, I I do I like I like the challenge of shooting in a square. When you're shooting in a square too, you don't have to follow a lot of the traditional photo rules. You know of like rule of thirds. Uh, you know, you you don't necessarily have to follow that rule. Like you can put your subject dead center in, mm -hmm. a, in the square, and it feels good. But anyway, uh, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna quickly come back now to add some, for the square add some warmth. Not a lot. Were you were gonna say something. Emily? Oh, just the square reminds me. Like of, it's interesting Contrast. to me that you shot that you always shoot horizontal uh, when you're sh when you're actually shooting on your phone because. Uh -huh. I, I don't, but um, it's interesting for the square thing in that if you're shooting like sometimes Oof, for a client. This is looking good. For like a lifestyle thing with people, yeah. mm -hmm. um, something that will need to go square, it's always better to shoot horizontally because it's like you can't yeah. squash someone, but if you can squash them in this on the way. horizontal, yeah. then it's a lot easier. So, so I I'm gonna, really I think good. one, one right. thing I might try to do is um, because I because I upped the the warmth mm -hmm. on this image, I might want to just revisit. Um, I just I might want to revisit her dress a little bit. Oops, sorry, that was the wrong tool. Let's use uh, this one. What are you thinking? Um, typically with uh, okay, I'll use that. Let me just, just gotta increase it. 
stretch her. I'm just trying to highlight her dress. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what I'm thinking is, can I, I? I guess the question is like, her 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 dress has blue. Mm -hmm. Can we bring do that we detect out. that or do we bring it up? And I don't know yet for sure. I think it's nice. I think it's a nice contrast. Yeah. I would love to see if you could bring it up. Let's just see if we can bring it up. I'm gonna use my, this tool. What this tool, tool are you using? I'm just using the brush tool. It's easy for me to just paint her mm -hmm. and it is. So let's, What we don't wanna, as someone pointed out yesterday, um, if we go with a, a, a vibrance, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of saturation, it won't affect, whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Skin tone, right? Ooh, skin tone. <laughs> Um, however, I don't know that I have that option with the selective tool. So let's use, let's, let's up the saturation and let's up the contrast of her dress. And then let's see if that made any difference. Before. Oh, okay, sorry. Gotta say I'm done. Done. Now, let's do before. Uh-huh. Watching the dress. Nice. Yeah, a little bit. Subtle differences. Very nice. Very nice. There's a few other things here that maybe I, if we were gonna like really, so uh, at this point of like a editing stage, if I'm like feeling excited about an image to the point where I'm like, yeah, like I'm definitely gonna post this. I yeah. Wanna, like, you know, um, then you there's like a million other things that you can really get into. Um, you know, right. and change. Like there's a little bit of, like there's a little bit of glare on her face. Mm. You know, I don't even know that it's noticeable, but to, you, you would know. take that off. Yeah, I would. You know, and then like look here. There's like a this little thing. You, you know. would clean it up. Yeah, I don't like it. You know, you know. Can this you is where you really. Go this is it. where you really start to. Quick. Get things. That just distract and get How it. How are you going to take the glare off her face? I think that's highlighter. Yeah, but... I think that's makeup. You know. I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna get rid of that. We could we could try darkening. We could try to like just really Nope. <laughs> Put some dress What in did there. we do? We made a whole new dress creation. Face. finished. Yeah. <laughs> we could maybe a selective adjust again and then maybe mm -hmm. get rid of like lower the highlights maybe. I don't know, I'm into it, but highlighter's really in right now, mm -hmm. so yeah. I think it's very trendy. It's probably too far away. Yeah. To notice, I think, yeah. And maybe it's actually kind of cool. Kind of brings a little... I mean, if we're looking at it there, it looks like a really, like a bad thing, but... It's like that. This is how. It's what interesting. Else? Anyway, I don't know what else to do at this point. It looks good. Ship it. Ship, Ship it. it. All right, so let's we have, like we have one. seven more minutes until portfolio, so maybe do one more. One photo? more, one more photo. Yeah. I okay. Think that would yeah. be great. What do we? Or Emily, do you want to do a photo or did it? Ooh. I feel like I'm. <gasps> no. I feel like I'm completely leaving you out of the. That's all right. Should we do a portrait? Yes. Yeah, that'd be nice. Of. A portrait of Dan. Dan Tom. Yes. Yeah. To lead into Dan Tom. And we also have up. Benjamin Heath. We could do a portrait of Benjamin. So Dan. is this also taken on the this is, Leica? This was, sorry, this was last night at Mount Tam. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think these are Leica. Okay. So uh, uh, important, uh, I mean, uh, so maybe this is obvious, but like, uh, you know, I, you know, you take, take more photos than you need. Mm -hmm. And then I think maybe even more important than the, than how you edit power. is like figuring yeah, out which yeah. one to, which one to edit. Yeah. What's All the right. next one? That one I did, that one I did a little playing around yeah. with. I was drawn to it. That looks pretty. What I'm looking for here is his face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's looking uh, old. His relationship to the head, to the mountain there, mm -hmm. is so, like, I feel like it's, I don't know, like his body language there quite as much. This one is pretty good. Could be a winner. Cutie. Or this one could be a winner. I don't know. What do you think? Was was this the right one? What? I like when his head eclipses the yeah, you know, but that's a little out, right? That's me. So give me. I'll um. Reset I'll reset it. So I think one I thing I guess be. to talk about is like phone, phone versus camera, and um, like we had, 
I do way less. Like Paco, what am I doing wrong here, though? On a phone. To reset. Um, did you edit those and export the edited version? Oh, maybe that's what I did. I think those are like already baked. I'm a dingbat. Yeah. Baked I'm fired. In. Okay. We'll do this one then. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's see it. Let's do it. I'm ready. So we're going to crop. crop. Who's ready? First crop. We're I might try this now. I might. We're I might cropping. Go. Start do cropping. Four or five. Do we like his shoes or not? Dan always wears his like Converse. I like his shoes, but uh, do you even see it? Yeah, a little I bit. think a little bit. I do like that he's standing in that like, space where the stuff's that's in more, front of him. Maybe that's more mysterious. Compositionally, I think that's that's a better. Yeah. Yeah. Mix the shoes. A better crop. Perfect. So one thing, one thing right away that I don't like is this is Emily. <laughs> I was gonna ask, Bye. is that Emily? <laughs> right away. I remember walking. Well, she's completely, and like, she's out I'm, of focus. I'll crop her out later. She's out of focus Take and me she's out. there, but we're, Delete gonna, me. we're gonna get rid of that. But you were always there. Thing. You should, you should. She was that. there. She gets credit for being there. Uh, let me widen that. Let me get, okay. Um, Maybe that's not the best. Let's get rid of more. I love the Tam photos from Alan. These were from last night, yeah. Yeah, they were last night. And can you, so can, would you fix the white sky? I think Tyson's gonna go whiter in this based um, on another edit, which was really pretty, I think. This like, one is tough, yeah. So there is, uh, th there, that is, uh, that's a way overexposed, right? And then this is the sky. We This was not the best time of day mm -hmm. to be shooting. At what point um, in your journey was this? This was, was like early. around, this is early. This is probably two hours before sunset. So mm -hmm. it's still quite bright. The sun is still quite bright. So. I really liked how fresh that one that you started editing where it was like, you kind of just let the sky go white and then everything got like this really bright, high key look. Yeah. That was cool. I think the so, sky's gonna go. What am I, oh, what am I doing yeah, wrong? Oh, 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 sorry, sorry. I was in selective. Okay, so, uh, Let's just bl let's blow the highlights way out here. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. see what happens. I, I mean, I could just select the sky and do it that way, and maybe that's the smarter approach. So let's do that. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna do the brush? Yep. Yeah. Or should we? What, how do? What do we want? Whatever people, you're feeling. People really want me to use that gradient. Tool. People love it. Yeah. So wait, sorry. I keep doing the wrong one. I would like the brush. So two minutes until portfolio. Two yeah. minutes? Yeah, and I have two I just go. <laughs> portfolios to look at. Oh boy. So I'm getting ready. Okay, so we'll, I'll go quickly then. So we're gonna do the whole sky. And I'm just gonna avoid Dan's head. Um, these I find that these things are pretty smart that you don't have to be like super yeah, it's pretty feathered, right? Uh, yeah, you don't have to be like 100%. You don't have to spend. So, <laughs> so we just blew that. We just blew that right out of the water. Nice. Bye. What else are you going to do? Bye. I'm going to even up the contrast of it to really make sure it's gone. Uh, what else are we going to do? Um, What's the color we're gonna situation? Brighten, we're going to brighten this thing mm, all yeah. together. Oh, as one. Just the exposure. Yeah, everything. Yeah, and that's going to do further. It's going to further blow with that sky. Yeah, I get it. So I don't want to go too much. I actually, you know what, I might even play with the shadows a little bit. I normally don't touch the shadows, but I think mm. he's in He's in the shadow. Mm -hmm. um, and then we got to get the contrast getting going there. So nice. I think it's, wow. that seems like a better photo already. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to add some warmth um, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I know I mentioned yesterday how much I like cooler temps. I actually like that but, cooler. Do you? Yeah, like you, when you had it, you know, when you had it just really white and not yellow, yeah, that it was felt cool. really fresh. Like yeah, Dan's yellow, shirt being yellow you don't want. Me. Yellow you never want. I don't think. But but I love br I love earthy tones. I love browns. Mm -hmm. I love oranges. You do you. Um, you know, I don't know. Let's that see it before. Good. Are we done? That's before. There's wow. quite quite a difference there. Yeah. And then if you were to shoot this same photo on your phone, mm -hmm. what would, would you have done anything differently? Well, Emily mentioned using your 
lock your exposure lock. Yeah. What I like to do when in a situation like that is I actually would probably have touched. Can you see where my finger is? Mm -hmm. So like that's the original photo. Mm -hmm. What I typically where I usually lock in when I have a sky like that is I go into like the lightest part of the sky and I lock in there. Now what's what that's gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna under expose the rest of it, but I always feel like you can get that. As long as you have that information, you can get it back. You can add mm -hmm. light and, and you can brighten it. You can't can't really do it the opposite. So I usually pick a point in the sky that's uh -huh. like it doesn't have to be the lightest, but like if there's a nice white you're area. Like you're cloud. exposing for the sky at the color you yeah. want it. Yeah. And then under Because I don't want to ground. I I don't I don't want to have the option of just having to lose the sky. So like in this case mm -hmm. In this case, I didn't take a good photo, to be honest. Like I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't adjust for the sky is... in the right way, and so I had to, I, you, I had to, oh, I had to like blow it out because I didn't, I wasn't able to like retain. This is it. a setting, or this is a scenario where a phone is actually going to do better mm -hmm. in, at exposure than a camera because a traditional camera yeah. is going to choose. Phone an, done gray here. A, ch yeah. a traditional camera is going to choose an exposure, but yeah. a phone camera is going to kind of do like an algorithm on it. Mm -hmm. And if you touch, like if you actually do, like I'll do that sometimes. I would usually expose for skin because I shoot people so much. Mm -hmm. But um, sometimes if you have like a person and or like highlight and low light and you like touch around, it'll sort of find the sweet spot where right. all of a sudden it's using multiple sensors to pull in all of that data kind of in the way that a cam that a phone creates an HDR yeah. image. Um, It'd be cool to just so bring both and take the same photo and see what happens. Yeah. Now that so I, we have oh, portfolio time. Are you okay. cool with that? Yeah, no, no, please. Is everyone cool I'm with that? Tar yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's Are we having like a... It's time. A moment? It's time. We're not floating in space. Yes, we are. Hello. Hello, we're in a spaceship. <sighs> okay, I can breathe. Okay. Can you breathe? This is the only way to review portfolios. No, I can't breathe in <laughs> space. Can't not without this helmet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like stuck. <laughs> I give up. So we have two I'm portfolios. I'm going to do my other space helmet. I like yours better. This I'm doing this. This. this is, you're, you're keeping it? I'm keeping it. I'm All keeping right. it. Well, you have to leave this up so we can hear you. Though. Oh, I'm like Sorry, a Western buddy. space person. Sorry. You're West. Yeah, we're all space cowboys. I'm keeping it. I didn't sign. So here is like claustrophobic. Here is our first right. portfolio, Mark. Oh wow! So we're just okay. We okay. get to do a portfolio review. Oh, this is so fun. Okay, yeah, is this is Mark's know. website. Can we? Yo. What do you need, Emily? Awesome. Uh, what can awesome, I do to help? Awesome. Oh. Love it. Oh, he's, look, he's done some great. I like want myself not to be in here. <laughs> so this is um. So, so this can we is go Mark. Anywhere? Yeah. What? Can we go to? Okay. Vancouver? One thing. So what? this is a portfolio review. One thing I want to say. Yes. First, what? Wait. This is his website or this is Instagram? So here. Uh, Good job, Mark. If Love you look it. at this yep. tab right here. Uh, you have to upload mm -hmm. them on Behance and focus on photography. Oh, so it's like a Behance portfolio. Yeah. I get and it. We will review these portfolios. And, Can I uh, say one thing in general thank you. about portfolios? Not that I have like a lot of experience, but try to, this is, I get, people ask me all the time for advice and this is the one advice I give people always is try to think about when you're choosing your photos, which is like the most important thing, try to choose photos that are unique to you, mm -hmm. right? And, di and then so it's like a simple question of like, could anybody else have taken this photo? And if the answer is yes, then maybe skip that one and right. go on to stuff that are uniquely yours or something that you did, whether it could be like a location or it's that you had or mm -hmm. a person that you had. So yeah. I think in Mark's case, I think these are all good examples of that. Like I don't, I don't, I don't look at this and I say, uh, anybody could have taken that it's um do you know what i mean yeah by that? absolutely okay yeah so mark chose to agree? create yeah i think that's a great these buckets 
So okay. where did you, you want to look at Vancouver? Uh, yeah, Gambino or Vancouver or. Oh, so the, these are the, each. Can we go down story? to this? Can we go down to that one? That yeah. one to me looks really interesting. So this will be a lot of images. Yeah, here we go. Okay. From Vancouver. Let's so we're going to look through. at Vancouver. Th I'm going to take It's getting really How, hard to talk about. Do we have a lot of portfolios? Do we know? We have two. Oh, okay. So we'll take two. about 10 minutes on this one and 10 okay. on the next. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Do you I'm leaving my own helmet. Uh, okay. No, I'm going to. Don't take You're my helmet. I'm taking this with me. <laughs> All right. All right. Here's so, here. man, I, I love this photo a lot. Mark, I'd love to know what you shoot on. Is this mobile? Is this. Uh, DSLR film. Feel oh, free it's to his chime personal in. website. He says his personal website, so that's cool. Mark's aware. Oh, what are you? At? You're asking what camera? Yeah, I want to know. Mark, camera Ashley's you? asking. I'm what asking. Camera. So let's chat through some of these uh, these images Beautiful. about Vancouver. I think the composition here is great. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know from lots like lots of cool detail? Look, there's a there's a boat back here. Do you want to talk about it as like Hasselblad? A, a portfolio review from like editor or from like image to image, like Mark. Probably. Oh, 500 cm. Probably like as a portfolio, as like a total piece of work. Yeah. I would go back to the. If you're going to do that, I would go back to the homepage first. Then. Start there. Yeah. All right. I don't know. I'm an editor. That's what, Let's yeah. go, editor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean. So these are the leading images in mm -hmm. two. And these are all different sections. I bring that Vancouver image up. Yeah. To the top. So it seems That's like some places and mm -hmm. then music is what I'm noticing. Yeah, it looks like, he, looks like uh, Mark's done some concert photography and a bit of landscape photography. Mm -hmm. As an editor too, like what's at the top? Is there's like an about. Mm -hmm. Like I, I read that kind of stuff a lot um, to see what people's actual experience is. Like if we were considering like hiring someone for something mm -hmm. to see if it just looks like personal work or if they've ever done work for a client because it is really different experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so lead photographer for something, something I can't read. But um, cool. Well, let's look oh, at wait. Yeah, we're at, okay. Oh, hey, go back to personal. Wait, there's a whole other website. Go back to personal? Yeah. In person. there's a oh, person. sorry, portfolio? Wait. So, oh, so there's my portfolio, portfolio so you've is broken new, it, so not a lot of details are there. So you've says. broken it into two kind of okay. things, like work and personal, right? Is mm -hmm. that how you've done it? Okay. Which I think is uh, that is a like I you know I have my website kind of like that too, um, so I don't know that that's a oh. necessarily a bad thing. But I would say when you have people come to a landing page, put your best work, even if it, like so, if it's work or it's personal, like mm -hmm. have your have your best work like front and center. Nice. And maybe so, so maybe some of that stuff on your portfolio work is would be good to have in there too. I don't know. How do you feel about it as an editor? Well, this is kind of interesting in that his personal work is totally different than his portfolio, which I think is actually cool. Like usually when people yeah. have personal projects, they're quite like similar. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of interesting that he's showing like a totally different side that maybe he's trying to like transition into doing work that's more like the personal work. I don't okay. think this personal work belongs with the commercial work at all. Um, if it's the most, Im it sort of depends. I think for That's what a for a portfolio, a yeah, you want to show the what you want to do. You want to show the portfolio should be like a look into the future mm -hmm. as well as the past. So yeah. if you want to be this photographer, when you have your homepage, I would have that be tab number one, which would be like the landing one and probably you know the one on the left, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then have like I would call it like commercial work or something as the middle one and then the about. Yeah. Right. Um, but if you're like, hey, this is totally just on the side and I want to do commercial, like I, what, what was the other, it's like a lot of eyeglasses and stuff. Um, yeah, he sent us this, this personal tab, so I think yeah. we'll be speaking to, so, to that. Oh, that's probably what he would like us to critique. Yeah. So yeah. we'll do that. Um, so my question is a lot of, there's a lot of ways to show your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, do you like, as an editor, do you like having categories like uh, commissioned work, editorial, I do. Port for, uh, portrait, mm -hmm. and, and being able to click I want to know like what's personal, if it's commercial, like how it's commercial, how, you know, I want to see a set of images. If this is like, he wants to show personal, but if the personal, your website. Can we look know, at a series? Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. You can. Um, Be who you want to be, but um, I would maybe say about it like a little bit 
of maybe if you're like music, I might make a category around music portrait portraits. Mm -hmm. Well, I think you, you said it. You said it best already, which was like show the work that you want to. Yeah, that the you future. want to get hired for, yeah. right? That was weird. Sorry. <laughs> Dictionary of the Philippines. I don't know how to use a computer. Yeah, click on that for me. Uh, so uh, the the Kanye West Jay Z show stuff, the one like these are all technically, that's like a flawless photo. Mm -hmm. But I think the one critique would be. What's your first thing that you said? The first thing that I said, which is, is, it, is that like, you know, you. are you the only person in the world that if Kate could have taken that photo? So, and so that's, you know, Deb's chiming in. I think a lot, I think, I think a lot of people probably could have gotten that. I mean, because it's like a, it's like a show. It's mm -hmm. probably very similar no matter where it, the set probably doesn't change from location to location. So anybody in that position with a good camera and a good eye could have taken that thing. So it's like, that's a good photo. Definitely have it in your thing, but maybe it's not your strongest. So maybe it's not the thing that's front and center. And you have that right now as your first image. Right. Mm. Whereas I think if we go back to that point. I'm obsessed. Yeah, that like, is awesome. That's a friggin' amazing photo. And like, that should be the, you know, I would rank that higher well, in terms of like what you show up in front. That's a photo you haven't seen before, right? It right. feels no. new. So that it's sort totally of surprise fresh. Yeah. and delight for the viewer. Like people haven't seen that before, yeah. and so I love that photo. Um, and also, great. like the Philippines, the just from like that. a travel I perspective. I see the rest of the of the yeah. series. I think you've done a good job of of clumping them together, and in, in 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 terms of uh, having them as a series. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what's going on. Is this uh, you know you you also want to always think about That's great. a story, and so this looks like maybe some relief efforts. You're at an area where mm -hmm. maybe their relief efforts were underway. You, if this is a, is this a square space? Um, you know, that you pro whatever Put website you're using, there, there's probably an opportunity to write something there, and and I think that that is good. It doesn't have to be a lot, but um, I think some it's, context, yeah. Give, give uh, think about who your audience is, and um, and to get some is, context. The Philippines is a place that a lot of. Oh, there's a lot of people who live in the Philippines and they've been there, but um, there's a lot of people um, If you're where are you based Mark? Tell us Mark. Vancouver, Maria. maybe. Maria is maybe a Filipino name. Mm -hmm. um, Mark. Mark Maria. And let from let us know where, where you are, but um, maybe he's from Vancouver. Or Vancouver, yeah. yeah. So it's the Philippines Vancouver. like is going to be an interesting place to people and so if you have All something right. to say. Yeah, Vancouver. Okay. Um, so it's cool to give a little context. Yeah. And um, for you guys, do you like showing multiple photos from one instance, maybe it's a, a place, or maybe it's a story, or maybe it's an editorial spread, or do you like seeing a lot of varied work? It depends, you know, like, um, in general, because for Tiny Atlas, we, we look at things as groups, so like, I would never like hire someone to do something if I hadn't seen sets of work mm. that they've done ever. Mm. Like I would never mm -hmm. do yeah. that. But on the other hand, like as a, like a splash page of your website, if you have, yeah. um, you know, like, I don't know if she's updated body. her website recently, but like a friend of ours, a friend of mine, Amanda Marsalis, who's a director more than a photographer now, um, she, she takes great like portraits and travel and different stuff and she, but she'll have like on her site she'll have like sort of a first you know sort of best of and that's what a book was traditionally right and sometimes you have like three books where you're like oh, here's my kids portfolio and here's my food portfolio yeah. but a lot of times you have one book mm -hmm. and so like a, you know having a front page of a website that is an overview but it's also where you tell people it's an overview and you're like this is my portfolio one, portfolio two, and then you have other things. So here, Amanda now just has like photography. Um, and you get, there's a lot here. There's like, there's perfect, you know, there's portraits of celebrities. There's totally personal work, travel. There's a huge mix, but you understand real quickly like who she is as a photographer. Mm. And then um, 
books. These are actual books that she does. So I don't know. Maybe she like. Yeah. Got, oh, well, so, so we're here, talking about the difference between like a splash page or a landing right, page. Right. But so here it's That's there's her like overview. so here's the overview, which I think is really nice. Yeah. And here's portraits, and then yeah. here's fader. Right. So there's like. Different. There's, you know, specific projects for working with the fader. Mm -hmm. Here's like one particular thing um, right. of white squares. Um, but yeah, so we can go back to Mark. But yeah. I think that I would like like a portfolio from him like this if he were like, if he was trying to get work. Like, I don't know what you're trying to get work doing mm -hmm. with this. And if this is where you're trying to take your portfolio like which things do you want to do like do you want to do what is what are you gonna is this concert photography is it travel photography um, and are you wanting to work for magazines like that or you're just like hey I want to express what my true interest in photography is mm. um, I'm, an, I'm gonna guess that Mark is is pretty early on in his that's a cool photo I, I'm guessing that you're pretty early on in your photo photo career um, he, he was Raised in the Philippines, so yeah, that's what I thought. And so Filipino. it's you're probably you're probably just now building a body of work. So um, you know, as you get more projects, more experience, and shoot more places, and just shoot more in general, you'll be able to expand. You know, but to to Emily's point, and to really to anybody watching with a portfolio, demonstrate. Not just the th like a good website or good portfolio will demonstrate not just the things that you are passionate about and love to photograph, mm -hmm. but also the things that you are within your sort of like wheelhouse of capabilities. And you can break them down into different ways. You can, you know, al I think always start with like the things that you are most passionate about, your favorite photos, and have them there. And then, ha but then have places on your website where it's like, yeah, I can do a series of portraits or I can do a series of landscapes and these are the things that I did mm -hmm. and that they're in a cohesive unit. That's so. great. We're gonna move on to our next one. Thanks cool. Mark. Okay. Yeah, thanks so much. Really nice. Spend enough time on that? Yeah, if you have any more questions yeah. let us know. You've have you have a couple real gems in there, so yeah. It's exciting. Thank you. Next one. All right. We have Gabriella Ferreira. Gabrielle from Gabrielle Ferreira. Hello. This is on Behance, okay. it's her portfolio. Mm -hmm. You got a bio. A bio. Which is nice. He's saying, mm -hmm. I do surf in nature. Surf in nature. Perfect, mm -hmm. that's a cute photo, underwater photo of you. Mm -hmm. And this is a Behance portfolio. Mm-hmm. Cool. So we're looking at some surf images. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then it looks like those go into diff more breakdown of surf. Mm-hmm. Do these, are they like, those things up up top, or the, did those go into like, are these like individual things, or is that just, oh, okay. Yeah, that's. I was, I'm sort of confused by the. The UI, like, is, are the, there additional the galleries? Yeah, it looked, I thought maybe it was another gallery, but it's not. Yeah, I wonder if it's better to click in, or mm -hmm. look at Can this. Can you click as, in? Well, I can click in in this way, and then we okay. can look like that. I think it's just like a layout thing. Yeah. Yeah. I just there was some confusion on my part of whether or how to navigate it, but. So here's some surf. I get with any portfolio review. So this is Gabriel. Gabriel, are you there? Are you there? Are you um, there? I think the objective is really important. Like, right. Um, if we're just looking at photos, like, are we just looking at photos, or is it for like? you know, like a just general like creative review or is there like, there's usually something in mind. With, I think it would be great for um, Gabrielle to look at the, maybe the layout and the amount of photos and maybe pick some strong ones that you like and some ones that might need a little bit more work. I think that is good mm -hmm. criticism. Um, I think, I think so the good, the good thing, the positive thing is like it's, it's very obvious like what he's into mm -hmm. right off the bat. Like this guy's into surf photography, wave, he loves the oceans, he loves being by the oceans, uh, loves shooting water. Mm -hmm. So that's that's all good. I think to your point, Ashley, like there seems to be quite a bit of a repetition mm -hmm. 
in the choices made. So there's quite a few, I just, uh, going back, I think there's quite a few photos that are, they're, they're fine, they're good, but I think they can just be like eliminated just so you have less, you have more, uh, so you have like sort of less reputation. Um, like if I've seen, you know, you, you have like eight or nine sort of like wave shots, like I don't know that I need, if I'm thinking about Okay, what can you do mm -hmm. to so that that this actually this these two places right in in particular yeah they seem repetitive they seem repetitive to me. Mm -hmm. I think there's a question of like design yeah. versus photography here, right. like uh, in a portfolio. Yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the simpler with if, if a, with a photography portfolio where you're trying to use it to get additional photography work, mm -hmm. you want to like eliminate as many questions for your viewer as possible. Yeah. And so this is like more kind of laid out like a magazine to be more engaging and interactive and fun. But if you have people who are like potentially going to hire you, what you want to show is like your best work, the work you want to get. And um, so just sort of maybe less fun, like yeah. le less fun, more simple, so that people can just focus on the images. And I think likewise, like Gabriel can focus on the images of like, okay, are these images kind of similar? Right. I don't like, I think letting photographers not worry about being good like designers yeah. is, is important with the portfolio site because you want it to be as minimal as possible so that people just look at the photos. And so even once you have like, background colors, there's some color, then some of the photos have background colors, some don't. Your mind is trying to figure out like, why are these ones have color? Like, right. we, ha we, we have so many cues from the... design world about yeah. what to think about things. And so, yeah, just simplifying is, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with any of the photography, really. I, I think for me, the thing that is becoming distraction is all these, all, all these like design Graphic things. elements? I don't like, for, I don't need a, I don't need a thing that says water shots there. Right. Well, but like as a p portfolio thing, you might be like, okay, here's stuff shot in the water. Like you could have a section that's right. like in the water and there's a section that Yeah, and that's all you need water. though. You yeah. could like, you, like one simple word that says water mm -hmm. right. and that goes to like a whole thing. The, o the other thing about the design, and I'm sorry to harp on it, but I, it's the design changes from photo to photo mm -hmm. and the layout changes from photo to photo and that is distracting to me because I'm not sure you're trying to figure it out. I'm trying to, yeah. Like people want to understand what they're seeing and so your brain is like, okay, why right. are these three? Is, am I going to be able to click into them? Or right. yeah. It brings up a lot of questions rather than just focusing on the photography. Yeah. Even though it's fun and engaging, it like, it kind of confuses you because you're trying to figure out what <laughs> what's happening. Yeah, and um, I've had an editor tell me that uh, if you have a photo that's not as good as the rest, it's going to ruin, it's, your eye's going to be drawn to that. So right. really, what? narrowing down what you have and because he's so specific about what he does just really picking those those best mm -hmm. ones I think I went to when I was just out of college I went to some portfolio review type of meeting at Calumet which doesn't exist anymore which is a big camera company back before the digital world um, and there was an art buyer there and she's like if you have a book that has 10 pictures. You come in and you show me a book with 10 pictures and they're all amazing. All I know that you do is take amazing photos. But if you bring me a book with 50 pictures and there's 10 amazing and 40 not amazing, then I don't know what I'm gonna get if right. I hire you. So that is sort of the leading line with all portfolios is you wanna like have your best work and then if people want to see more, they're like, this is great, but I have this assignment doing this mm -hmm. and I didn't see enough of that, then they can always ask you for more. So to give um, some very specific feedback, you have four photos here on this page. Mm -hmm. This one on the lower left, I think, could be, sorry, was that black? Oh. <laughs> uh, I'll just put it back on. There you go. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. So I can get my ultra critical spaceship voice. I'm the only one surviving the one, in here. one, I think you have two choices. I think you have two images here that are clearly strong and then two that are like just just okay. And so like you could take go from four to two or even four to one. Mm -hmm. Either the one in the bottom left corner or the one on the top right. Um, if, you're, if you had to choose one. I would go with the one on the bottom left. Uh, that, I think that's the stronger image mm -hmm. uh, from this. So like... And I'd go full screen and I wouldn't have any text on it. But that's just me. That's me. 
That's like yeah. how I would approach it. I think like give me the give me the image, give it to me big, let me let me see it. I mm -hmm. think like the photography can should be able to speak uh, for itself in this case. Yeah. Okay, so we have one more minute. So the last yeah. departing words for Gabriel. What do you think? Design elements, maybe nix them. Focus on less. Yeah, yeah think about fun simplifying photos, it. Just simplify it. Um, I think it's real nice and specific that it's about water. I really like the introduction mm -hmm. um, yep. that he's like, "This is me. This is what I do." Yeah. That's really nice. I feel yeah, like that's everyone. Good. I, think that's great. I feel like everyone could do that. So I mm -hmm. think yeah. that's great. You got a, it, like a logo, and that's also a place <laughs> yeah. where you could be kind of fun. And and then I would just yeah. make it a bunch of white squares or rectangles after that. Yeah. Like have have all your fun at the beginning, and then just show people the work that you do and that you want to do. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. yeah. And keep shooting. Keep, yeah. keep shooting. Don't stop. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, everyone. This thank was you. really, really Sorry great. About the Thanks helmet, for guys. being here. Do... That was fun. Yeah. Right? And Sorry say... about the helmet. I just. I, I know. Well, you that. have your own. It's fine. I have my T O E T O helmet. <laughs> Stick around. Until next time. For <laughs> the next <laughs> one, nice? we have Dan, yeah. hosted by Ben. And you're going to stay on too, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm living here. I'm moving in. Thank you, everyone. Don't miss it. Thanks, everyone.